What is up guys? Back with another video today on Little Blue. Um, so on this video today, we are going to be upgrading the hump in the back. Um, obviously this is the new hump, which you'll see the process of. It's not entirely finished yet, but um, I want to take this truck to some shows and it's not the prettiest truck in the world, but I want to spice it up a little bit, make it look a little nicer and everything like that. So, um, so since we got all the new tools, the bead roller and all the sheet metal tools, I wanted to do a full um, bead rolled hump. And um, we did just that. Before it was the ribs on the top and then I just plated it. It was kind of ugly and it wasn't anything special and I couldn't get to the bags from the above. So I wanted to add an axis panel, bead roll, and make it look nice. Um, the whole bed will be getting raptor lined. I just ordered this stuff a few days ago. So once the raptor liner gets here, that will be a separate video of raptor lining your bed. Um, that way this will tie in all nice together and it'll look really good in the end. Right now it kind of looks funky, but once we get it all raptor lined, it'll look really good. Um, so other than that, got the process of the video. Let's begin. Did a bunch of pre-measuring, figured out what size I need the, the bolt piece to be for the bed hump. Uh, we are working with a piece of 18 gauge sheet metal and I cut it out to 42 inches wide and, or technically 42 and a half wide and 42 long. So uh, I made this quick little thing the other day, this little tracer tool to help. Um, Check this out. Okay, here we go. This is my follower. And then I got a bunch of holes at different increments, at half inch increments, to the center, to the edge of this. Um, so I think we're gonna run Okay, we're gonna run the third hole. Okay, so we're running the third hole on this piece right here. Kind of just wedge our sharpie in here. Get it fairly lined up. Okay, then we're not gonna to touch it. Now I'm just going to border the whole thing. Um, this is more meant for when you're doing like curves and stuff. It'll keep your curve um, continuous, um, even. Uh, you could just do uh, draw lines and do roller and stuff, which I will have to do in the middle because I won't be able to use this, but this is just really quick just to go around. So I got it set here, and now we're just gonna run around the piece. You can also do this with your hand. I always do this with my hand. If, it's, if I'm doing a really little edge, you can use your finger to follow with, while holding the pin. It takes some practice. I'm, I've gotten pretty good at it, but we're doing, bigger size you can't you know your hand can only go so far so made this quick little tool let's see here
skip forward a little head. Um, a couple things have changed in this video just from a millisecond. I ended up having trouble to bead roll this large panel and I try to get a second person to help and it works but it's kind of hard to choreograph and take your time and everything and have someone just stand in there holding your piece. So I decided to make a table this piece is on right now, you'll see it here in a minute, but this table is made out of 18 gauge steel. I folded all the sides with the uh, metal brake. We got metal brake pieces that support underneath, and then we got one by one square tubing as the legs, and they fold up so this whole thing could be removed and put off the corner when you're not working on a large piece. But this large piece proved very difficult to do by myself. Even with the second person, it's kind of hard to choreograph. So I uh, got the table. I've already started bead rolling more. It's going by a lot faster and it's working out really nice. Also, I am now using a wireless microphone, which should sound a lot better. You should always be able to hear my voice nice and clear. So I can actually walk around and talk and not worry about um, making sure the mic's all pointed at me and everything. So, couple updates should make it good so we started bead roll and everything um, with the bead roller even though this is a 36 inch throw it still isn't enough to get these corners right here so what we're doing is I bead rolled as much as I could and now I have flipped the die around so I can come back and hit these corners uh, before we hit these corners uh, since the die is flipped I'm going to do this inner axis panel right here so this part raises up, so now we're going to push this part back down so it's kind of level. And then that way when our piece sits up in here, it will uh, sit flush right here. So other than that, we're going to roll this big one, and then we're going to finish off all these. We'll clean up the panel, see what it's looking like. Now, if you notice, there is some warpage going on, which that's what a bead roller does. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, it's actually not that much warpage for this large of a panel. And um, once, the, once the folds get put in, that will kind of cancel some of the warpage. And since it's going to be getting welded into the bed, I can counteract the warpage when I'm welding it in. Um, if you're doing something, a larger piece with more bead rolls in it and it starts really warping out, that's when you would transfer it over to the English wheel and put in a pre-stretch and then bead roll it the other direction. So technically you're fighting um, the stretch or you're compensating for the stretch so by putting the pre-stretch in it you put it over by the time you're done bead rolling the panel should be fairly flat which I have tested and it does work pretty nicely but on a big panel like this we're just doing step uh, a step bead so it doesn't really warp the panel out too much and like I said once you get these bends in here it's going to help uh, flatten out some of those uh, these edges and everything so not too worried about that so I'm talking Let's get some bead rolling in, get a time ups going, and maybe I'll kind of talk as I'm bead rolling. So that's what I think is going to be nice about this for doing videos, is I can actually talk while I'm doing something, while the, in the, mic, the mic is on my body. So let's get going. So I like to do a light pass before, first, and then I'll go to my depth that I'm thinking of. Um, the depth I've been doing is about uh, four full cranks once it's hit the metal, four full cranks down to the steel. And this is 18 gauge steel, like I've said before. So let's get going. Making sure the piece is doing what I want it. Okay. Now what I've learned by using this already is take your time in the corner. And with the light pass, it'll kind of help you as you put heavier and heavier passes, it'll actually kind of smooth the corner out a little bit, even if it is a little wonky first time around. That's what's nice about coming back around, you can actually smooth it out. So I'll have to move around here every now and again. And then the big straight panel, you can just let it run. And this bead roller is adjustable speed, I have it on about half speed right now. And it is, uh, so I'm getting off my line a little bit right there. So we'll come back to our line and then we will correct it when we come back on the next pass. 
So that's what's nice about the bead rollers. We kind of can fix our mistakes. Um, so there's that. Yes, yeah, so we're running about half speed and the foot pedal is um, pressure sensitive so you can go slower by putting less pressure on it. So like right here, I'll go fairly slow around the corner. Just watching that inner bead where it's hitting, where it's doing the work. And I'm not too worried about hitting my exact line as long as I can make it look um, even, then that's all, I'm care, that's all I care about. Like I said, I'm sweating. It's a hot day today in the Northwest. I'm used to the cold weather and it's hot. And I just helped my neighbor move it, put a tree in the back of their truck that they just pulled out of their yard. So fun stuff. And this is only, I've only done this about a half a dozen times now, messing around the bead roller. I'm getting the hang of it. Um, it's definitely a learning process. Figure out how the machine acts and how you need to move your workpiece. All right, let's see if we can hit this line. We will need to be putting a light right at that bead so we can actually see what's going on really closely because it gets kind of shadowed. So you kind of can, uh, that's why I kind of missed my line earlier. Now you can put up guides. I tried to do guides before, but I actually don't really care for putting the guide up. I don't think it really helps that much. What's nice is this, this middle piece, we're actually gonna be able to do with no problems without stopping the bead roller. So coming down to our fourth corner here, going to take our time. Once we get through it here, right about there, now we're going to put in our, our final crank, which should be, should be good. If we need some more, we can always come back, but can't really undo if you go too far. So it's better to work your way to the step that you're looking for.
And we got this panel marked out with the Clicos, which is like a temporary rivet. We got this piece cut out, which will be welded to this piece. I thought about making it bolted and then painting a different color, which would be really cool, but this is a work truck and it's gonna get scratched. So I'm just gonna rhino line the whole thing. So it's got a really nice look to it, but it's subtle. I love this new tool. I used to have one. It was the cheap version where you just squeeze two handles together and it took forever, right? So this one's got, this one's got, yeah, a lot more leverage so you can do that. Get more squeeze on it. And then it's got the fucking quick handle. So right, when you put it in and you squeeze it together, normally you'd have to twist this out, right? You just open it and then you just pull the handle up and it spins this little piece right here. Oh, I love these little things. Oh, yes. It's cool that it creeps it on. Mm-hmm. That's how it holds it. We got the axis panel, and then we did a cutout of the Rody fabrications, and now we are going to spot weld it from the back. Uh, like I said, I thought about making this a bolt-on piece, but I think it'll be a nice little hidden touch once it's uh, wrapped and lined, and you'll just see the perimeter of it. I think it'll be just that perfect amount of custom and not overkill. Like I said, um, this is gonna be the top of the notch, so it's gonna be abused up top so I didn't want to have it painted and get all scratched up and look like shit a couple weeks down the road so having it wrapped her just gonna be way better um, anyways we got it all bolted we traced it and then pre-drilled a bunch of holes we got about 20 or 25 holes in the piece now so now we're gonna take the welder and just plug up these holes. We'll double check to make sure our uh, welds are sticking to the, the Rody Fab. But turn our welder on. I'm running the welder a little bit hotter than normal if you're welding this, but since we're just spot welding these holes, I wanna make sure it penetrates good. So. Double check underneath. That looks like it penetrated. So just aiming for the center of this hole. It'll plug up this hole as long with um, bonding to the fabrication piece. And we got it all clamped up. And every spot I'm gonna be welding, I wanna make sure it's pressed up tight.
other side. Ah, it's a climb. All right. What is up, y'all? Okay, so we got the bed off the truck once again, and we got the old hump cut out and got it fairly squared up. I think we're pretty much set. Uh, if anything, we'll need to clean up some angles. Um, I'm not gonna deal with this part right now because I'll have to make filler panels and they're gonna come straight across. So I'll figure out where this needs to be cut once the hump's in place. So those are just rough cut right now. Um, and to get this all set up correct, I got the center line of the tubs marked out where the center of the hump's gonna be. And I made a frame, just a quick basic frame out of some 5 8 square tubing. So, we marked the center of the little frame and then the center of the tubs. So that way we can tack the frame to the tubs and then we have a nice um, flat place to put our tub down onto. And then I'll probably, I have more 5 8 that I'll probably structure, structural the hump up a little more. But for right now, I just need a flat place to get this hump in. So. I'm gonna kind of put this over me like this. And all I'm gonna do right now is basically just tack it right in the middle. Just a light tack, just so it can be moved around and it doesn't fall on me. That way we can figure out all our heights and everything like that. So I'm just gonna center this side up and throw a tack on there. All right, guys, thank you guys for watching. Here's the finished hump. I'll do some beauty shots of it. Um, like I said, I need to raptor line the whole bed. I will do the top of the rails, tailgate, and then the whole interior of the bed and everything. So all tie in nice and really make the truck look a ton better. Um, but the overall process, it was pretty, it went pretty well. I had to build the table for a bead roller to bead roll this huge panel. Um, but other than that, after that, it was uh, pretty smooth. Uh, we got the access panel up here, which is just bolted because I don't plan to show it off or anything because there's nothing special underneath. Just if I need to get to a bag or an airline or anything like that, I can. Um, so that's about this video. Like I said, I'll have a uh, bed lining video once I get my bed liner and do some more stuff to this truck. I want to still build the ladder rack for it once I get some money saved up for that. Um, so we're just, you know, slowly but surely making this truck look a little nicer than what it is. But I'm talking a lot as usual. I say this every video. Um, the wind is picking up, so hopefully you can hear me. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, make sure to rate, comment, subscribe, like, share if you want. And we'll see you guys on the next video. Keep on trucking. Peace.